Welcome into Celtics Late Night. Ben Vallis here <laughs> along with Jake Eisenberg and Wayne Spoony. And guys, the Celtics Woo! with a convincing win to take a 1-0 series lead. All the angst leading into this mismatch, all the talk of P PTSD, and the Celtics come out and pretty much dominate the Heat in Game 1. How's it going, guys? One down. Look, one. 15 to go, baby. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Whew. I mean, we got, it. we got everything we wanted, I feel like. Almost. Almost everything we wanted. It was just, you know, dominating performance. I think I was expecting them to maybe be a little rusty, kind of coming out looking pretty disjointed. They did not look like that. They come out to that 15-point lead kind of out the gate, and Garden's going nuts. Everyone's looking good. Oh man, didn't do a lot to ease my the tightness in my chest, but I was, I was, <laughs> I'm screaming, three, five past three in the morning. Got my yeah. I, this is this is the first attempt at the lucky hat. We got it's red, so it's we're fighting lucky. fire with fire. <laughs> oh, um, smart. One, yeah, we're one to know uh, in the Legionnaires hat. If it can protect me from the Australian sun, <laughs> it can protect me from the Miami heat. So That's we're off right. to a good start. Please never remove that hat, Jake. Uh, yeah. A couple of a couple of programming notes here. First of all, shout out to the podcast listeners. This is our late night show, which we stream live on YouTube pretty much after every game that we possibly can. But it's the playoffs. We're going to throw absolutely all of our content up on the audio podcast feed as well. But if you're listening to the audio show later, you notice a different format. That's why. Also, another programming note, Jake and I have been up since 3 a.m. this morning. That's when the game started here in the east coast of Australia. So we might be a little rusty, but Spoonie, he's uh, red-faced after a bit of golf earlier today. That's and uh, got a bit of sun in his skin and, and looking sharp. And he's hopefully going to carry us through this one a little bit. But uh, let's just let's start broad here, guys. Like, obviously, amazing uh, weight off our shoulders to yes. go up 1-0 in this series and, and rid ourselves of some of that PTSD. Like, they, they pretty much just dominated them, right? Like, you couldn't have really asked for much more from this game, Spoonie. Yeah, to, and first of all, let me just say, I'm not sure what's redder, Jake's hat or my face right <laughs> it's now. Close. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's very close. Uh, dude, I, I feel like I was really like in on how they were going to start because if you give the heat an inch, they take a mile, yeah. dude. Like You just got to crush their will from the word go. And I don't think the heat ever had, I mean, they barely got within 10 at any point in this game. Yeah. I know at the end of the first, it was five, but they had cut that lead down to five. And then the Celtics pushed it right back over to 10 in the second quarter. So I felt like the way they came out, they were so hyped. The garden was going absolutely ape shit in that first quarter. I think that first seven zero or nine Oh run before the heat called a timeout. The place was buzzing. The defense was immaculate to open the game and i think that's how you can set the tone was like we're gonna have games where we miss threes this was not one of them but you can just shut off the heat's offense completely in this series and basically give them no chance to win these games and they came out and i think they made a statement right from the top about how good their defense is and how undermatched the heat's offense is this is great it was great and this this man this heat matchup Man, well, I like I couldn't sleep last night. I watched the first half of the town. I locked in Joe Mazzulla style, but I st I turned it off halfway through 8 p.m. in bed. Didn't work. Didn't sleep at all. Finished the second half of the town at like from like 1 a.m. to to 2 a.m. <laughs> and then like in in the, in in that I also listened to Locked On Heat. I'm like maybe that'll like help me like doze off. Did the opposite because they were coming off their Bulls win, where yeah, they're playing so they're win. Hyped. So it's all, yeah, exactly. So they're like, that was a monster win. They don't have Jimmy. They're like, they actually play faster. Jimmy's so like slow and methodical. They kind of like the style of play. Jovic, ooh, can he come in? Double bigs now. Bam can roam. We can put him on a J. Like that's what they don't want. That they don't want. They don't want Bam on on a, on a J. And honestly, like kind of freaked me out. I'm not gonna lie. Like at, at one in the morning, I'm like, oh my god. Um, they're so confident. Why? Like they've got nothing to lose. They're gonna, and then that's why I think this matchup's kind of perfect, though. Like, yeah, we talked about it yesterday with Karini. It's like objectively, analytically, they can't hang with us. And this defense we've talked about being able to go to a new level, and we saw it go to a new level today. Obviously, the Heat's offense struggles at times, but like, they there was nothing across the board. The only thing that they were able to kind of go to consistently was bam mid-range jumpers and it's like it doesn't matter how many mid-range like he goes 10 for 18 tonight on two-point jump shots it's like 
you're just not going to beat the Celtics if that's the best source of your offense. Like that's probably that, that might be the best he shoot. Oh man, Ben's just showing Jalen Brown baseline spin dunk oh, yeah. on Harmy Harkes. He's <laughs> arousing me uh, mid mid sentence here, but the the defense. On Bam, I thought was really good. You force him to those mid-range jump shots. Don't overreact. Don't let him get anyone into foul trouble. It's very possible. Like he, th- like he shot forty-three percent on long mid-range this season, and he showed it's fifty-five percent overall today. That could easily be his best game. And mm-hmm. like, just play them straight up. Force those misses. Like the communication was on point. True Holiday starting on the Tyler Hero matchup. That was like the one thing where I was like, are we going to be, is it going to be Derek or Jalen? And surprisingly, Drew, Drew takes the takes the challenge and he played some awesome defense, but I loved, 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 loved the way they set the tone defensively. Yeah, the defense was maybe the number one thing that stood out to me and the fact that Tyler Hero was just completely zeroed out of the game. And Drew Holiday had some questionable decision-making moments throughout, especially the first half. And then in the second half, he and Jalen Brown kind of woke up a little bit. But defensively, I just I really like the shot profile that we forced. The Heat, they took a lot of contested two-point jumpers. In fact, 48% of their shots were from the mid-range compared to just 27% for the Celtics there. So forcing them into the least lowest quality shots, forcing them into taking a lot of them, and then really limiting the amount of threes that they were taking or shots at the rim that they were taking. They, the Heat were really efficient at the rim when they got there, but they got there so infrequently that it wasn't really a factor in this game. And then Drew and Derek who had quiet stretches offensively, their screen navigation, their switching, the stock exchange, Spoonie was really buzzing in this one. Yeah, dude, they did such a good job, I think, getting over screens, fighting over all those like illegal BAM screens. That First of all, that oh, one he had my on God. Derek White was ridiculous. Like He just slid right into him. Uh, such a clear illegal screen, but I thought both of them were great. Um, that chasing around hero around all those screens and those handoff actions is a very difficult job. Uh, and holiday man, like he's kind of had a little bit of trouble with, I think some of these smaller, quicker guys, but I'm not even sure heroes all that quick or like explosive. He's more like a crafty type of ball handler. Um, and he kind of uses his pull up game as a danger to get himself into the lane and get into the mid range. And Drew's mu- he's great against those types of players because he's really smart. He's really disciplined. And I thought we did a really good job. I think KP bit on one Bam pump fake uh, mm-hmm. and Bam went to the line. But other than that, he stayed down really well. And I just don't know what Miami can really do offensively because, yeah, I think, Ben, you mentioned it. Running them off the three-point line is going to be the key because they're actually a good shooting team. I think they were like seventh or eighth in three-point percentage this year. Uh, they just don't take a lot of them. So, you know, you don't want them getting in a rhythm. We saw what happened in the fourth quarter. They got into a rhythm. They got confidence. And all of a sudden, it's like a 12 or 14-point <laughs> game after yeah. it was 30-something. So, you just want to keep their free th- uh, f- three-point attempts down. Um, and then, look, if they're it's, some of their rim finishes they had were, like, really difficult. Like, Hawk has had one or two. I think he went over Porzingis. Like, we'll live with those types of rim finishes, too. And then, yeah, pushing everything to the mid-range. Like, Bam is not going to pull a Carmelo and drop 50 on 20 mid-range jumper. It's just not going to happen. Um, So I I felt like the defense, like, this is what we needed to come out and look like after a week off. And I thought the game plan was absolutely perfect. Just run them off the three line, playing like a nice, not super deep drop, but drop coverage, and then let Holiday and Derek White get over the top of those screens, rear view contest, or get back in front, which they did a ton too. Like they got all the way back in front of their ball handlers multiple times, which is like, Mm -hmm. well, you're just creating zero advantage on your pick and roll in that case. Yeah, KP was great in drop and like really willing to engage the ball handler and just come a little further up to the level than he normally would throughout the regular season. We've been talking about this all regular season, like what's Mm -hmm. that drop going to look like in the playoffs? We've got a great glimpse of it. KP much more engaged with that ball handler and just really disrupting the pick and roll actions of the Heat. And then when he got that one-on-one matchup with Bam... You know, Bam was, I think, quite efficient. It's probably safe to say scoring from those positions, like posting up KP. But KP got great contests on every look. Is is Bam going to be able to be that efficient from that position uh, throughout the course of what is hopefully a short series? And does it matter, just mathematically, Missoula Ball, if most of their shots are twos, even if they are efficient Bam post-ups? Does it really matter? But I was really impressed with KP's defensive tenacity and his activity, moving his feet, 
didn't really switch him onto guards that often, but wherever he was defensively, he sort of managed to be enough of a deterrent. And then bringing Al Horford off the bench, we'll get to the bench more broadly a little bit later, but he was incredible filling those gaps while KP uh, got spelled on the bench. Um, so defensively, I think great, and that's probably the most standout part of the of the game plan from this one. But the other side of the ball, I want to get to Jason Tatum in a sec, because obviously triple-double, captain's knock, you might say, great performance. But mm-hmm. again, the standout for me offensively, and this is obviously this is an obvious takeaway, but... Porzingis, again, just attacking the zone, hitting the three. He said his shot didn't feel perfect. Looked pretty (laughs) fucking good, guys, throughout the game. Uh, KP, uh, it's just, it's so interesting because obviously we know what happened against the Heat last year and Brad just like perfected the roster to the point where even a coach like Eric Spolstra, obviously they're short on some personnel, but there's basically nothing you can do. Like you just can't really out scheme the amount of talent top to bottom in this like top eight, which is the size of the rotation in this game, Jake. I thought it was incredible. Look, I mean, KP with one of the questions coming in, right? Like this this Celtics roster has so much playoff experience across the board. Tatum, Jalen, Horford, Drew Holiday champion. De- uh, Derek White's had a couple of deep runs as well. Ka- Ka- Chris Stapps has like 10 playoff games. And I think it's it was fair to be like, how's he going to handle the physicality? How's he going to handle the pressure? And... The Heat are one of the most physical teams. Like, we saw what they did to the Sixers and the Bulls. And, like, both the Sixers and the Bulls didn't crack 40 points in the first half. Um, You know Jimmy Butler, but, I mean, he was basically on one leg for most of the Sixers game anyway. And so, to be able to match the physicality, handle the physicality, but just, like, it, there'd be, there's no answer. There's no answer when he gives, when he's getting the ball in that mid post. I was very interested to see how Jovic was going to be able to defend KP because like you look at the measurables, like Jovic six ten, long, athletic. I'm like, okay, in theory, that's a guy that can bother KP, and maybe he he maybe gets a little comfortable with Porzingis as the series goes along. But KP didn't really feel like he was bothered by him at all. He showed over the to- over the top of him a couple of times. Um, I guess that's six ten is pretty tall, but seven foot three is five inches taller, <laughs> which which is just is just nuts. And so very comfortable and a man and just like big nuts threes. And that's like that's I've been saying like going back to the Denver game in Denver where he wasn't super efficient. He ended up going three for ten from three, but he's really confident in taking shots. And like you're just gonna have nights where you're not gonna be as efficient. But can can you just like you're gonna get bailout like you can just find that shot 32 feet Shot clock winding down, you haven't found anything, and you just you're just able to get it up. Even if he misses, you're still getting a shot on goal, and you're able to set your defense. But also, it feels they feel like momentum threes when Kristaps hits them because he's just like he's so far back. It's the seven foot three unicorn that's doing all this other stuff as well, and then he like hits you with a a thirty two foot a rainbow bomb with four seconds on the shot clock, and it's like, fuck, what are we supposed to do with these guys? Dude, that one, I think it was against Hawkes. It might have been against Jovic, where he pump faked like out of an oh, open yeah. three, let the defender recover, and then took a step back and drilled it in his face. I think I think it was in the fourth quarter when the Heat were getting pretty close too. And yeah, talk about big Latvian nuts threes. That was like <laughs> yeah. the biggest of them of, of the game. So JJ thought... Redick was like having a wet dream watching the replay on that <laughs> yeah, one. He was just like, like oh, we man. all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, JJ. I was cackling like a man when the whole game yeah. it was great. I, and I thought we did a really good job. I think I remember one, maybe two post-ups by KP on BAM, and they went absolutely nowhere. Yep. But otherwise, we found him when he had the mismatch, and then we used him in the pick and pop or the pick and roll when BAM was on him. And that is exactly how you have to deploy him against this Miami team because BAM is BAM's an awesome defensive player, like just straight up. KP's not going to move him. Maybe he can get some jumpers over the top, but we can work for better shots than that. You know, there's just no need to go to that if you don't have to. And then there was one. They tried to go. I, I think they went to a zone look with KP out there. Uh, I, I can't remember. It might have been Jalen swinging it to Derek, and then he dropped it down to KP, and it's just a little mid range jumper, and it was too easy. And the Heat, like, basically didn't go zone anymore when KP was out there. They're just like, well, we can't do this. And guess what? They can't guard the Celtics in man either. So they're in for a very <laughs> long series if they can't get that zone to work. And I just don't see how it's reasonable to try it when Porzingis is out there, especially when Porzingis and Tatum are out there and the way Tatum was passing the ball. Like we were talking about with Greeny, the heat take away your first read. So you've got it like that corner shooter is going to be open. I, yep. I can't count how many times we hit the corner shooter. It was beautiful. It's exactly how you tear my, uh, Miami apart. 
Yeah, I was just scrolling Twitter looking for that stat you posted on, on the post-up uh, offense, Booney. So you wrote, Synergy has the Celtics scoring 1.17 points per possession against half-court man-to-man defense in game one. They scored 1.56 points per play or points per possession against Miami's zone. If the Heat have to man up the Seas all series, it'll probably be a short one, which I think is... Uh, Pretty accurate. Oh, yeah. There's some pretty efficient numbers there going against uh, what is a top defense regular season wise uh, for yep. the Miami Heat there. So KP, obviously the, the key to unlock everything, but Tatum, like you kind of suggested there, is the guy turning the key essentially uh, and just operating everything. Obviously, triple double, his first ever playoff triple double. Sort of surprising. It was also the first time the Celtics beat the Miami Heat in game one of a series, I think ever, or at least in this Jays era. Um, sort of explains a little bit why there was some anxiety going into this yeah, one, just the, the recent history between the two teams. And um, if I don't, if we don't seem as, as joyous and relieved as we probably feel inside, it's just because we've been up so early and at it so long <laughs> today. Even, even Spoony, like we were saying before we went live, like we're sort of navigating other life responsibilities while yes. also trying to watch the game. So it's, it's an exhausting pursuit, but we're very happy, even if we don't necessarily look like it at this point in time. Um, <laughs> Jason Tatum. What else can you say? I, I suppose we kind of have to get to it. People are probably waiting for us to get to this. The Jason Tatum involved play at the end of the game where you'll have to help me with my memory. In fact, why don't I help everyone's memory? We've got the clip here from the playback where it's Jake and Robbie reacting to that moment. And <laughs> watching Robbie's face as he realizes just how mad Jake is at the play is also uh, very funny. You can test any threes for like 10 minutes. Whoa! Oh, Tatum goes down hard, bounces right back up. He's fine, baby. Fuck off, dude. Oh, yeah. Fuck off. Fuck off. You're down 16 with 60 fucking seconds left. Fuck off. <laughs> yes. Oh, Robbie. Yes. <laughs> like, I was, I was appropriate furious. Response. Furious. Yep. I was so mad. These fucking heat guys, dude. Like, <laughs> 60 seconds to go. Like, just give up. Just give up, dude. Like, you've lost. The fact that they were trying so hard down 16 with a minute to go, cool, heat culture. But it's like, so Drew Holiday does push him a little bit. But then Caleb Martin still jumps just like into Tatum. Like, I understand he he gets pushed a little bit, but he just launches directly into Tatum. I'm not like, like so Scal was kind of like, he took it a little too far to me. He was like, the heat called the timeout. And then the next thing you know, Caleb Martin, there's a hit on Tatum and Caleb Martin goes to sweep the leg. I'm not, I'm not going there. I think Scout took that too far. I don't think Spol- Spol- Spolster is a guy that's like bounty gating this thing. I just think that it was like a very reckless and unnecessary play when the game is over. And like that, th- th- it's it's just the Heat do it. That like at some point it's just part of their thing. Whether it's Giannis last year, it's. It's this injury now, but I mean, I, I was furious, but the, but the response from Tatum, I mean, he goes down, he's like considering just like being like, fuck that, this hurts. But he like, he, he flips like the switch in his mind. He's like, nah, up we get big, big shoulders, giant shoulders up. Yep. <laughs> Cap- Captain marching down the other end. Come on, free throw time. Let's shoot these free throws. Let's let's get out of here. And meanwhile, Jalen's like going face to face with Caleb Martin. Cookies and cream are dunking uh, Caleb Martin in the milk. And uh, it was, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was fucking terrifying, dude. Like if that goes like a tiny bit differently, like that's a like a catastrophic moment. Yeah, dude. So I, I know there there's people like we had a nice conversation about it in the Discord, and some people were like, I don't think he meant to do that. I think he was just playing hard, right? So like. You can get convicted of murder if you want (laughs) to kill someone and you're like, I'm going to go kill that guy tomorrow, right? But you can also get convicted of murder if you're like, that's a busy highway and I'm up on a mountain. I'm going to roll this big fucking boulder down there and see what (laughs) happens, right? It's recklessness, but it's still intent and it still Mm -hmm. counts as murder. So what Caleb Martin did, maybe he was just trying to play really hard, but it is so beyond the pale of recklessness that it becomes intentional at that point. Like you are flying in to a dude who is in the air in an 18 point game with 60 seconds left. Like, yeah. 
chill the fuck out. Like you, yeah. that is how you hurt people. Like you, the heat do not get the benefit of de- the doubt on plays like this anymore. I'm sorry. This shit has happened way too many times. And yet again, like I thought Tatum's head like slapped against the Same. floor and I thought he mm-hmm. was going to be like knocked out. Luckily oh, yeah. he pops right back up, sinks both the free throws. So I just like, I, I just, the heat until proven otherwise, like that shit is intentional to me. Yeah, like be physical. That's that's part. You're undermanned. That's part of your team's identity. Sure, fine. But sense, please. Be reasonable. Like you already, you guys already talked about the parameters of the game at that particular point in time. Like there was nothing to be gained from you know quote unquote sending a message. You know, doing your best Draymond impression. Nothing to be gained yeah. other than coming off like a complete idiot, which is exactly what happened in Caleb Martin's case. Who, meanwhile, I don't want to jinx things here, but that shooting <laughs> is well and truly gone. <laughs> he sold his soul. He cashed it in for for one hot shooting series a year ago. And uh, now it's it's nowhere to be seen. And um, also, he gave the the Sixers a win there by missing a free throw, bricking for chicken, I believe is the, the technical Two. term. That's right. <laughs> Two. That's right. Um, Two. But I I loved the no reaction from not only Jason Tatum yeah. but but kind of from from Cookies and Cream from Jalen and Chris Stapps. Like there was a bit of like back up. Let's give our guy space. But to not react to not get riled up and have some sort of altercation to me says we're not like going to play down to your level. We're not going to let you drag us down to your level of idiocy and beat us with experience. We're just going to stay at our cool, calm, professional level. We're going to execute. We're not going to get pulled down into any of this nitty gritty shit. We're just going to walk to the other end of the court calmly, hit our free throws, call it a fucking game and move on. We'll see you at game two. It's a blowout. Uh, even when they did sort of come back into the game, we ended up winning by 20. So um, very, very satisfying. And to see our guys rise above that at that moment in time, I thought was a really good indicator of maturity, as well as just the way that they attacked the zone and the way they conducted themselves technically, basketball-wise as well. So um, really good, fortunate, relieving, uh, consequence-free takeaway from that yes. moment, which could have been absolutely terrible. Speaking of terrible, thank God uh, he's prob- thank God he's a, thank God he's a nine man, dude. Like <sighs> if anyone's know, dude. if anyone's gonna take the hit on one hand, it's like I don't want it to be to be Tatum because we can't ha- Tatum can't get injured. But then on the other hand, it's like he's absolutely at the top of the list of guys that can just like pop back up and be fine. Like can you imagine if that had been Chris Tapps? <laughs> dude, oh my God, he would have broken in half. Yeah, like peanut <laughs> brittle. <laughs> <laughs> so you know yeah on one hand a please no on the other hand <laughs> yes there you go there you go thank you the latvian oh. flavor uh now <laughs> i was gonna say speaking of terrible which is an unfair um brush to paint this with but jalen and drew uh, you know we talked about and heralded drew's defense which was incredible and like a, a huge like top three component of why this game turned out the way it did but offensively particularly in the first half, and I'm grouping these two together, Jalen and Drew just did not seem like they were there for this. They did not seem awoken to the moment and the assignment. And both of them had, you know, Jalen had that electrifying opening play, the spin and the dunk, which we showed on YouTube earlier. But generally speaking, the decision-making, the overall awareness on both ends, particularly for Jalen, was not particularly good. Uh, we saw him, I think he wasn't wasn't credited with enough turnovers. I'm just seeing one on the box score here, but he was certainly, it seemed like he was responsible for at least the heat getting out in transition uh, on a number of occasions. And um, with all the, the talk, I guess, and, and a lot of the, the action that we've seen demonstrated from Jalen Brown so far in the regular season, you kind of think, okay, like he's righted his wrongs. The, the demons have been shook. He's ready to go. And it's just like game one, half one against our, you know, historic foe in the heat. He's kind of back on his bullshit again, Jake. It was, it was kind of frustrating. Although he did turn it around in the second half. Yeah, he did turn it around, but like, absolutely, man. And everybody was on the, the the same page. And like, this is the superpower of this team is that no one needs to force it. Like, all you need to do is make the simple play and the talent level is absurd where you're just punishing the other team by making these simple plays. And... Jalen, like you want him being aggressive. He had those two awesome plays to start, hits the three and the spin. But then, yeah, then he's attacking the rim and like he's getting downhill and it's like very obvious that he should just be kicking it to the corner or, or like stopping and then just dribbling back out and finding it, finding a guy. Um, and so I was just like spamming, trust the pass, trust the pass. He eventually got to it. And look, Jalen, like we've all got the PTSD, right? But Jalen's the one guy where he who really has it, I think, and w- where we have it f- through him. Is it like Tatum was kind of awesome in that Heat series? When you look at the conference mm-hmm. finals last year, he like game one all the way through. Really, game two that they lost. You know, Tatum thirty four ten six. Jalen goes seven for twenty two. 
if they he just plays like a normal game, then they they probably win the series, honestly, if they tie it 1-1. And then obviously the game seven nightmare from Jalen. So it's like, he is like the one guy where his weaknesses, where the Heat are just like, feel like they just were designed, put on this earth to like take advantage of that stuff from Jalen. And so you start to see that happen early. And you're like, we just, you don't need to force it. We don't need you to put the cape on right now. Like that's what was so incredible about Tatum was that he was so patient, so decisive um, and so willing to let his teammates dominate. And, and Jalen did get there. He still absolutely settled down in the second half. I mean, second half, he was 12 points, three rebounds, one assist, one block, zero turnovers. I don't know how he ended the game with only t- 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 the one turnover, I think. Yeah. I, so, I have no idea, dude. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> know how that, that works exactly, <laughs> but yeah, he, he was really good in the second half. And um, if the three balls going in like that, that's probably the bigger takeaway. I expected, as I said, them to be a little clunky offensively. Like they haven't played for so long and they're playing this like junky heat team. Um, but like really Jalen was and Drew were really the only guys that struggled. And that was kind of a microcosm of the season as well, right? Like Jalen started the season and we're like, how was Jalen going to find his role and figure stuff out? And he ended up having the best season of his career. Drew Holiday was similar. He was like good, but it's like, it doesn't quite feel right. Then all of a sudden he was like, hands down the best fifth starter, like, in the NBA. And so I do think those two guys will settle in and look, you banked a win and drew Jalen, everyone's going to feel a bit more comfortable, a bit more confident going into the next one. Yeah. I think I one. I think I wonder if some of the things we think are turnovers, like sometimes when you're gathering on a layup and somebody swats it, they call it a block when it's really like a strip. So I wonder if there was one or two of those for Jalen, but I think credit to Jalen that like, he kind of stepped off the gas and let other guys play their game and Great was just call. sort of more of a decoy or a spacer. Like, he only took 12 shots. Like, that's nothing for Jalen Brown. So um, I, I appreciate that he did did that. I think he was really good on defense, except for in that fourth quarter run against my, that Miami had oh. where he blew, like, three straight switches. Like, yeah. I, I wonder if Joe changed the scheme to try something out and everybody got the message but Jalen because it was, <laughs> it was bizarre. There were, like, multiple wide-open layups and everybody's looking at Jalen like, what the hell, dude? So other than that, I thought he was really good defensively, and I thought, yeah, he was, like – the heat the man they just got him they just got him but yeah. like that's fine we don't need him to go for 30 a night to beat them in this series we just need him to make his open catch and shoot threes drive a close out here and there and then maybe you know have there will probably be one game where we're like yeah Jalen had to go for 36 tonight and that's how we got the win so we just need one big game out of him and play good defense and make your threes and for the love of god make your free throws dude hey oh he made the, uh, the last two but he bricked those first two and i was like oh god this might be a long day but it was yeah. not so um and then yeah I, i'm with you on drew honestly with drew i like don't even care what he does on like if he's making his threes and he's yeah. defending like he did today whatever he couldn't hold on i feel like he d- dropped like three passes too which is just really bizarre i wonder if it was like nerves or something like that so Drew, I, I'm yeah. I think both of those guys, yeah, you're right, Jake. They'll figure it out. And you know, if Jalen plays this type of game for the rest of the series, I still think we'll be fine. Yeah, I never want to hear Jalen Brown has been locked in the gym hours after practice, free throw, free throw, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> sharpening I know. his Wang. tools. Like it's just not. He's just a bad free throw shooter. All right, just like, stop wait, shooting. Wait just stop practicing. Stop yeah. practicing them. I think, if anything, <laughs> like there's no point at this point. I'll, I'll say it again. Post up on the free throw line. If it's technically legal, <laughs> if you can manage that, you get Sam Cassell out there Just, on defense. Ah. <laughs> yeah, a little shimmy, shimmy, turn around, fade, buckets, <laughs> two for two every time. Uh, alas, that is uh, not allowed in the game of basketball, at least at the professional level. Uh, yeah, Jalen. Um, I, I, I will like say we, on, yeah. I was like, well, on Drew. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, no, you go, you go. I was going to say, oh. like, like <laughs> Drew, Drew, Drew was, he was making plays. Like, he... He like he like he was getting to loose balls in a way that like Jalen wasn't necessarily doing a lot, and I think that's just kind of the nature of Jalen. He's just like tiny bits slow. Uh, not not to call it. We know what you mean. We know what you mean. Slow. Yeah, the game. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm currently slow. Yeah. And 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 so, but like Drew, and I think that's part of the magic of Drew. Like he's not quite the defensive playmaker that Marcus is, but. You know, you could look at that 2021 finals run 
from the Bucks, and like one of the most iconic plays in that uh, series against the Suns is when Drew strips Devin Booker and then throws the alley oop to Giannis. It's kind of a microcosm. It's like awesome defensive play. Should you have actually made that offensive decision where you throw it to Giannis for the alley oop? Ends up working out okay. But seven rebounds. He's just really tough on the glass. Like because he gets his body into you, and he's so strong, dude. So like he yeah. kind of comes flying in. Like he comes flying in like Caleb Martin did does, but like legally. And he's like, as people are also going for rebounds and he's like Tyler Hero just bouncing off him and other guys are bouncing off him because he's like sturdy. The great wall of holiday is flying through the air and um, <laughs> yeah, just, ma- just making plays. So I really enjoyed that aspect of Drew's game today. Yeah, it seems like that's the flaw of his game. Like, he can be as bad as he was offensively in the first half, but at the very least, he's going to give you, like, crazy fucking elite defense, which is game-changing, particularly in the playoffs. So, um, love that aspect of this new team, which really should have gotten used to it by now. Not particularly new at this point in the postseason. But, uh, look, we're going to get to the bench rotation. I really want to talk about the extra three guys we had playing off the bench in this game. They were incredible, and a lot of question as to what their rotation would look like pre-playoffs and we've got a really nice early glimpse of that uh we'll get to some of the dirty bam stuff as well we've got some post-game clips to get to but first we've got a bunch of people here in the stream so we're gonna ask you if you're not subscribed already please hit that subscribe button we're on audio platforms as well so please subscribe to the first of the floor audio podcast if you can't sit and watch us on youtube you can listen to us at the gym or at the pub or in the car or whatever uh, <laughs> later. So I apologize advance if you, in advance if you're listening to us alone in the pub, but uh, who knows? There might be one or two of you out there. Uh, <laughs> click that like button as well, please, because if all of you right now click that like button, it would probably be our most liked video ever. You're all Let's there. Do it. This is live. It's a twitch of the finger. Take a moment. Hit that like button. Helps put us in favor of the algorithm. Helps show more people that this show exists and it's maybe something they might be interested in watching as well. So help us out. Helps out with the algorithm. Now, uh, the rotation guys, Al Horford and Peyton Pritchard checked in at the seven minute mark at the first quarter. It's kind of surprising. I, I think we, we kind of talked about the fact that um, this might be a Pritchard based series now that Jimmy Butler was out. He came in, I think, earlier than any of us expected. And Pritchard, Horford, and then later in the second quarter, Hauser, all huge factors in this game, particularly Hauser in that second. But Jake, what were your thoughts uh, on just the, the rotation or uh, I guess the bench aspect of the rotation in general? I love it. I loved it. I loved it. The bench was ready to go, man. And I mean, Pritchard, 24 minutes in a playoff game and super effective. Like the dude comes in, has eight, eight points, four rebounds, five assists, zero turnovers. That's it, dude. Two for five from three. You know, he, he, he goes three for seven overall. I can live with that every game. Three for seven, two, and then go 50% from three. Like, that's that's money every single time. But, like, the most impressive thing to me, like, you know, Horford was excellent. I'm sure we'll talk about him too. But, you know, that's just the expectation from the big dog at this point. But Hauser, he misses his first, his first three threes. Heater in that zone. I'm, you know, f- freaking out. I think Eric Weiss is in the chat making fun of me already right now uh, when I was freaking out in during the stream. And then and then Hauser proceeds to just like not even touch the rim on the next four threes. Nice. And and like and that's kind of the power of this bench is like they can the, the starters are good. Oh man, Whew. Tatum's on the bench, Derek's on the bench, twelve point lead, and then Sam Hauser hits four threes in a row and the game's over. It's like they're the the confidence of Hauser is is like I mean, it's so important, man. And Joe Mazzulla was talking about how after he had that one for twelve night. He texted him saying, like, just be happy you had that. You have the privilege to miss uh, 12 threes in the NBA. Just some, you know, deep philosophical stuff. I'm not, it kind of went over my head, honestly. And, but like, he did, did, didn't matter. Knocked, knocked all four of them down. And I mean, that's semi buckets, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Pritchard, second highest plus minus on the team, other after Derek White. And it's like, not fair to compare plus minus with Derek white because he always leads the team so basically the highest plus minus on the team and i thought like pritchard makes a lot of sense chasing around tyler hero and some of their other guards and delon Wright and things like that so i think defensively he was totally fine that oh, man that five assists no turnovers is just so beautiful um and <laughs> those two and horford really work so well with tatum especially against his heat team because they were helping and like doubling Tatum so much and I, th- I think maybe three of Hauser's threes in that run were created by Tatum one was I know he had an assist on and another he draw the double 
hit it to Pritchard, then Pritchard kicked it to Hauser in the corner, money, nothing but net. So I think those guys spacing the floor and playing solid defense with Tatum out there is like, they just kind of blew Miami like off the court in that second quarter. I like Miami almost didn't know what hit them. Um, but it was the house money. They got hit by a house, you know, and uh, <laughs> I <laughs> on fire today, dude. <laughs> like, all all of us. Let's go. <laughs> that was oh, good. Man. We're in postseason <laughs> form. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it, it's one thing to get the ball to the nail and collapse the zone. But when you kick it out, you got to hit those threes. And uh, Sammy Buckets had a few attempts in that first quarter and they didn't go down. And I'm thinking, shit, the, the moment's too big for Hauser. He's finally got that rotation spot. He's carried it through into the postseason. The bright lights are over him. He's getting these wide open threes as a critical part of our execution. And he's just not hitting these shots. And then second quarter comes around. They keep leaving him open for some reason. I guess you got to help off somebody and collapse off somebody. And he finds his rhythm. And uh, it's good night heat from that point onwards. And I was just so stoked for Peyton Bridget as well, just watching him execute at that level and, and it being a continuation of what we saw in March, obviously at a diminished scale because he's playing under our, our primary starters and our primary minute getters. But to see Peyton Pritchard execute on that stage against this team, this foe who have like um, targeted him relentlessly in the past, fucking awesome. And then Al Horford, <laughs> Barking at our guys in the fourth quarter when they started to let go of the rope a little bit. Just Papa Al, the OG, like dad, basically just be like, come on, guys, get your yeah. shit together. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and they did. And ended up winning by 20. I'm trying to win a title here, boys. None of this shit. <laughs> yeah. None of this. Yeah. None of I'm this, fucking I'm, 38 years old. I, I'm yeah. winning this shit. I, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Turning the, turn this team around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Coming in. Yeah, you, you guys get it as, as dads over here. Uh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Like... Um, <laughs> Horford, Horford, solid man. Like, and I also, I, like, quietly, I'm sure you guys love this too. 25 minutes, 41 seconds for Al Horford. You know, too keeping many. <laughs> yeah. the fact never, that he played at all. I mean, yeah, the fact that they <laughs> actually needed the dad. Yeah, they actually needed dad to come on the court and save the day. Embarrassing, <laughs> but man, it's so nice to be able to go. And they went to the to the KP Horford um, lineup as well like the versatility that he provides you still at this age we're going to talk about it a million times we've talked about it a million times throughout the regular season but like he's getting over some screens at a couple of times and like still getting contests and forcing them into um to keep the offense moving like just so impressive and i was just going to say on on pritchard he hit two threes right and both of them were just monster nut punch threes one of them mm -hmm. in the corner heat play really good defense and like the the Celtics have to like try and find something late in the shot clock, and there's nothing better than the shot clock expiring and then the, the three just splashing through. So Pritchard hit one of them, and then he also hit one above the break, also semi -sh late shot clock. I'm pretty sure. And like just you do so you do so much to stop the Celtics, and then like it's like oh man, Peyton Pritchard's gonna do the 32 foot thing that from the same spot as KP. Like that just hurts, man. And there's a reason. Like this was like one of the best benches with net by net rating in the NBA. It was the best net rating bench in the NBA for a reason. And mm -hmm. to, you're right, Ben, like, it, you know, I did make fun of Kendrick Perkins on online, which I've, you know, done, a, which we all do as we should. <laughs> regularly. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah, regularly, which I'm pretty sure that's what he wants. So you're, you're welcome, Kendrick. But the, the, he did, he did raise concerns like about the bench. I don't trust the bench. And I'm like, well, they've had the best bench in the, in the NBA, but I think it is fair. Hauser, this was his first real playoff game. He should have played last year in the Hawks series. And that was a mistake from Missoula. And, but look, and this, and this is why, right? Like he can blow a game open like this. And so to see these guys, I mean, Horford, we have no, you know, concerns about, but for Pritchard, Hauser, game one, like jitters, and that's what you need from your role players at home. Like you can grind some wins out on the road. Maybe they don't play as much in Miami. If they can do this and like those big momentum moments, the white boys came to play. Yeah, dude. They're, and on Horford really quick, I, we found him in the post a couple times mm. against mismatches. And then there was one time Tatum's got the ball, like the nail, and he just takes one dribble. And then Bam just helps off Al Horford at the top of the key. And Tatum just tosses it to him and he hits a wide open three. And it's like, this is your best coach in the league. This is the guy. Like, what is he doing? Why would he help off of Do you know who you're helping off of? Al Horford, like, shot 40% from three, splashed it. It was, a, I think it was in the third quarter when we were going on that big run. So I just, like, you can't help off of any of these guys. So as long as, and then one of our 
Jays is going to be out there, and then somebody else who's a borderline all-star is going to be out there. So you can't help off these three. They're all okay to elite defensively, um, and they're going to be playing with our best players all the time, mixed and matched. That's what never makes sense to me with like guys, Perkins are like, oh, I don't trust this bench. Well, there's not going to be five bench players on the court at the same time. They complement the stars perfectly. That's what makes them an awesome bench. Like, yeah, I wouldn't trust Hauser and Pritchard generating two man game offense in the you know, <laughs> conference finals. Oh, come no on. No shit. But they're not. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, Hater. You know, pick Duma. Yeah, slip the Duma. screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're never going to have to be asked to do that. And what they do perfectly highlights what the Jays and KP and the guards do. So. They make sense together. They make sense with the stars. And that's why their net rating is nuts, dude, because they could just blow other benches off the court. I don't understand the bench thing. Like, the, the yeah, as you said, but I watched the Magic Cavs game. The Cavs ran like all bench lineups. And I was like, does Jamal Mosley know this is the playoffs? And like, you don't have, <laughs> you, you can just play your, your good players more. Um, yeah, so like, it's just, yeah, they're going to be on the court with all these awesome guys with elite shooting. Now, we've got some post-game clips to get to. Obviously, we talked about the Tatum fall, the, the very dirty Caleb Martin play. Here's Tatum reacting to that in his post-game press conference. Uh, I feel fine. I mean, I didn't see. I, I went to go get the rebound, got knocked out there, fell, uh, you know, and I got right up. I'm going to go shoot some free throws. Just nothing. Like, yeah, a continuation <laughs> of his re- on-court reaction, really. It makes me... It may, I love it. I fucking love it. Like captains knock all around today, like top to bottom from, from, from the second he stepped on the court defensively to the post game press conference. Like he doesn't, he's, it doesn't, it should, doesn't matter. He's, he, if they win the title, they get the credit. But like this dude has been through the, the battles, man. And like, he knows it's like, it's going to be tough. It's going to be physical. And like he, the six foot nine dude with monster shoulders was like, enforcing his will on the game through like throughout across on the boards defensively as a leader to like to do that and then and then a step up and be like I'm not worried about these these dirty little fucks you know <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even get the shot to go either like if the three was going he would have really oh. had a, like an absurd game but yeah you love to see it from Tatum I, he just feels different this year i felt like all year like his maturity level and his approach to the game just feels like he's evolved past like i i'm gonna help you guys get yours but i'm also going to get mine as well like (laughs) i'm gonna take whatever shot i want if i'm feeling good about it but if you're open i'll pass it and now it's like he he's like the chess game player and the game is the pieces. He's no longer like the queen on the chessboard. And I think that's that's whoa. the next level of superstar. Yeah, whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a terrible. Uh, whatever. I'm just rolling with it. Dude, no, 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 I, I, I was like, great. I, it, it, I was legit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Um, so it just like that's the last level of superstardom. Like you almost see their numbers plateau, but it's like eye test stuff is just a little bit different, a little more in control, a little more mature. And I think we're seeing Tatum take that step right now. For sure. Now, this is totally on me not running these clips as we were discussing these. I, I realized subjects, the but, same thing. <laughs> but we've got Porzingis talking about the matchup with Bam Adebayo postgame also. No, this is business. This is not... You know, we of course we want to stop him as much as possible, but understanding he's they're going to play through him all the time. You know, he's going to be involved in all the situations. Um, this is I don't care about him. I don't care about our team and and what we're trying to achieve. You know, and uh, and this is not one on one me against Bam. You know, this is Celtics against Heat. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll make sure that's the that's our focus. Shots fired. I, I don't love care him, about dude. him. <laughs> I love him. Can dude. I just say an Eastern European accent going, this is business. It's like, the <laughs> yeah, most thing. Yeah. It's like that's right before you get shot in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> dude, he's, he's awesome, dude. He, 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 he's so like animated when he's like talking. He, like, he's, he's easily my favorite interview on the Celtics this year. And like, he's, you know, he's, he's doing like the little, the head, the bob and weave. He's like, you know, we like, we're getting in there. We're like bobbing around. And so he's, he's awesome, man. He's, he's just loving it. Yeah. Yeah. K, yeah, exactly. Everybody's, everybody's loving KP. Like he's, he's wearing the, he's wearing the beautiful suit in the, in the, in the, in the, in the press conference looking suave, like, and, and, you know, in, in the, um, in game, uh, presser or the interview which i don't know why they're doing they've decided this 
to do that this year yeah. where they're doing Leave in-game p- player interviews. Like Kevin Love's like, sounds like he's going to have a heart attack. I was like, actually, please continue to interview Kevin Love in the middle here because he played five minutes and is about to pass out. But um, <laughs> Kate, uh, it was a, I forget who was, I think it was Lisa Salters. was like, it looks like you're, you're, you're shot. Everything's going in it because it feels like they're, they're having the post-game interviews in the middle of the game because they're up 30. I'm like, can you guys not do this right now? Like, it's like you guys are pouring it on. How do you, and like your shots fu- like on fire and he's like, oh, you know, but it's not, it's not quite perfect. He's like doing his, <laughs> doing his hand yeah. movements. I'm like, bro, he's you're so like, good. you're, you're shooting 50% on 32 monster bombs right now. Looking pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah. And he had that hand thing uh, towards, I think it was the end of the, of the half yeah. and it looked like that was going to oh, be an issue. Like didn't, didn't seem to be a problem long term. And now he's got a couple of days where he can just stick that thing in an ice bucket and, uh, and go about his business. Look, a couple of missed points. We'll talk about adjustments very quickly, not that the Celtics need to make any, uh, and then we'll wrap it up so we can catch the end of this uh, Indiana-Milwaukee game. Uh, no spoilers. Um, are you guys keeping an eye on the score? I, I did see you, saving it? I saw okay, someone okay. in the chat say something about it, but if you guys missed it, then... Oh, that's you. cool. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. <laughs> uh, okay, so dirty heat culture. Bam, out of bio, moving screen on Derek White. Oh. Another uh, just egregiously, obviously dirty play. Clearly moving. Wasn't called, I don't think, and wasn't even addressed on the on the broadcast. I was tweeting at JJ Reddick, like, man, you, you could do the right thing. Like, talk, address that moment on the broadcast. Of course, as he often does, JJ Reddick ignored me personally, uh, but another dirty play by the Miami Heat, unfortunately, and just so typical of what we've come to expect of them. But Derek White, again, bounced back up, got right back into, into the play, uh, didn't let it bother him, and uh, we moved on and, and blew those fuckers out. So um, I don't know. Any other missed points you guys want to get to before we quickly uh, wrap up on adjustments? Uh, I think that's the adjustment is Eric Weiss, when the playback was like, you, you wrap up that video every angle and you send it to the league office. And it's like, like Derek White got killed on that screen, dude. And like of all players to not call that on Derek White, like one of the most elite screen navigators in the NBA, like that just doesn't happen to him. And Bam just gets away with this all game, every game. And this one was egregious. And like, like I thought Derek White should have like maybe maybe been uh, tested for a concussion, dude. Like he copped a big bam shoulder, yeah. like directly to like the upper chest area, big whiplash, like spin spun around, and it's just like you watch the replay. It's like textbook, doesn't get set, keeps moving across, and like that's how they get free for offense, and it's it's just so infuriating. They will be sending that to the league office. Will they call it? Can we get Scott Foster on game two? That would be my number one request because I bet you he calls it. True, my, oh, yeah. my goats. My goats got faster. And, dude, and another thing, the fact that it's Derek White. Derek White does not flop. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I understand if it's, like, Kyle Lowry spinning Marcus around Smart. after he gets to get yeah, Marcus Smart. Maybe I'm one of those three. <laughs> but, like, that, apparently that's what you need to do because Smart used to get that call all the time, even though he was a flopper. Um, and Derek never flops. If he gets hit on a screen and goes down hard, it's probably a foul because otherwise he's just going to get over the top of it. So yeah, that's, that's all the heat can do. That's it. They just need to muck us down to this crap level, get in our heads and hope, you know, we go on tilt and start firing away bad shots, but they kept calm. They kept cool. Like they're not going to, this team is not going to get rattled by this bullshit, but yes, just call one. I just want one. one. So he has like, has to think like a second thought about doing it. <laughs> Yeah, or just start flopping. Maybe is the the other yeah. adjustment. Just if you're not going to get the calls, flop away. Get PP out there flopping too. Why not? Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I have two two other missed points, uh, and then Excellent. we can get to adjustments. Unless you guys have other missed points, um, and I'll, I'll answer my own question before asking it. I was not worried about the heat run to end the game. Obviously, butt clenching time during the fourth quarter while it was happening. But after the fact, with the benefit of hindsight. And I think they addressed it after the game, like human nature becomes a factor in letting a team get back in things slightly. When you're up 34, you're going to take your foot off the gas. And again, they were able to put their the pedal back to the metal to some degree to, to wrap it up and win by 20 at the end. I don't think that that little snippet of the game is indicative of their overall approach to this matchup, to this series, or how they're going to conduct themselves in the playoffs. And they kind of got a bit of a free lesson there and sort of getting a reminder, game one of the playoffs, oh yeah, if we do get to use that expression again, back on our bullshit. Like, we are going to get punched in the face. We did, but we got away with it. Let's not do that again. You might call that an optimistic takeaway, guys, but that that's kind of how I feel about that run. 
They were up 34 points with like 10 exactly. and a half minutes to go. It was just like, and like the heat just, as it, again, like the Caleb Martin thing, that is like, they can't just accept that they lost the game. You guys lost. You got the shit kicked out of you. Just give up. And they go seven for nine from three. It was like Dean Wade-esque. Like if, if the if the game had been like 20 points, then this would have turned into like a kind of a disaster. But I don't, I, I don't think if the game had been 20 points and they would have let their foot off the gas. I think it's like, it was so, like just an absurd lead at that point. And they started to do the turn the ball over thing. But yeah, I think I agree. Free lesson. Um, but they, they were, they were really um, like the game was in hand, even though I was like freaking out more so than anybody else um, when it was happening. Like you take, you take a second. And it's like they were up 14 was as small as it got with like three minutes to go. That's like a pretty insurmountable uh, lead in pretty much any context. So it was it was pretty much safe, but it was nice that they were able to. It didn't get down to six. Like it didn't like we didn't actually have to play the math game where it was like, see, it was impossible. They didn't need to do anything. It's like okay, well, it did get a, like a little hairy, and they just pushed it back out to twenty. Yeah, I, I think it's ultimately probably going to be a good thing. They've talked about championship mindset and things like that all year. Well, like here, yeah, here you go, man. Like you can't let off the gas against any team at any point in the playoffs. But I think had they not pushed it back to 20 and it ended like 12 point game, I would feel less good about it. But the fact that they were like, oh, shit, they're not going away. All right, let's squash this bug. And they immediately were like, okay, and we win by 20. Ultimately, I think it's probably a positive. I, you know. I'd like to say I don't think we'll see, you know, them lose, you know, take a 30 point lead and have it go down to 15 again or something. But it's probably going to happen. But it's a good thing to be leading by 30. Like, that's yeah. a positive. That, yeah. That's the my focus thing, yeah. as well. Just go back up by 34 again. That, that'd be nice. Yeah. We'll worry about what happens afterwards. We'll go from there. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it also, it, 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 it's just what happens. Like, the Clippers game was similar in that, like, they were up like 30 plus and then the, the Mavs kind of got it down to... 15 and it's like oh man is this a clip clippers choke job and no it's just like it's kind of just the ebbs and flows of a game and the, the clippers end up pushing it back out as well but yeah man i think i think that's it for me oh, okay final miss point was larry bird oh, no. oh. at the game like i don't think so he was he's know. in he's in boston they did the jersey signing like what a, a day or two ago it's the playoffs you're there like why is he not at the game? I was maybe thinking maybe he, his um, stipulations were, yeah, I'll come to the game, but like, please don't put me on the broadcast. Please don't put me on the Jumbotron. Maybe just like give me a case of Coors Light, stick me in a box somewhere and leave me <laughs> the fuck alone. Those are my terms. I'm Larry Bird. Uh, but yeah, there's no no sign of Larry Bird at this one, unfortunately. Um, and I guess the only other question I have for you guys is like, what adjustments are there to be made on either side? Uh, nothing, man. Nothing. Yeah. Keep, keep, do, do what you did to, uh, today. And I think, I think you're, you're fine. And, and let, I, I, I just don't like expose the wizard. Right. But like at some point it's like, what, what can you do? And I'm, I'm not f mentally capable of really thinking about it right now, but I'm sure, um, in the next couple of days we'll do our game two preview and, uh, I will have come up with some real adjustments, but right now I'm just like, just, we'll just, just win by 34 again. Be up by 34 with 10 minutes to go would be my <laughs> yeah. plan. Yeah, I, I think if you're the Heat defensively, I would probably try to angle the math better in your favor and run us off the three-point line and don't help so much. And, like, make Tatum do what we're making Bam do. Like, try to make him get to the rim, you know, 15 times. Make him, you know, take fouls and make free throws and make mid-range jumpers. Because the amount of help they were sending was hilarious, and he picked them apart with his passing. So that's like that's step one. I think the natural adjustment is okay. Let's not help so much. Let's not let them get off fifty threes because that's what they want to do. Let's see if they can beat us at the rim. I absolutely think they we can. We'll just get hero onto Tatum, and it's chopped liver. It's over anyway. So yeah, to your point, I'm not really sure they have an adjustment they can really make, but. I don't know, suppose the wizard, maybe he'll come up with something, but I anticipate we will not shoot as many threes in game two and we'll probably shoot 60 now, but 
<laughs> well, I think Miami need to shoot more threes themselves. That'd yeah. be the one adjustment I'd be looking at. They shot 12 less than us. Like, you, how are you going to get shit hot from three if you're just not putting them up? And I understand we're running them off the three-point line, but they, they need to do a better job of finding better looks because it's going to just be getting crazy hot from three like they did all series last year if they're going to have any chance of going toe-to-toe with us. So I expect them to be chucking them up in the next game. Um, all right, anything else, guys, or should we wrap it up there? No, yeah, but that's what Spo wants. And like, there's the famous clip of him being like, all they have is the threes. And one, we great. We'll we'll shoot as many threes we'll as, as you want. Like, <laughs> and uh, and but but also yeah, po- like MH in the chat, post up more. Like, I love Tatum attacking quick on post ups. That was probably like one of the biggest differences I noticed. You could just tell with Tatum is like, he's just going. It's bad, like he's got the matchup. It's like two dribbles and he's gone baseline. So um. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm ready for game two. Can't wait for two days off again. I know, dude. I know. It's an eternity of time. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Probably just many more podcasts. So make yeah. sure you subscribe to this channel because <laughs> yes. we're just going to keep pumping out the pods. Um, all right. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to the audio podcast and the YouTube channel because, like I said, we're going to be live pretty much every day or two throughout the playoffs, cranking out that Celtics content. Spoonie, Jake, love your work, guys. Until next time, go Celtics. Go Celtics.